Today on a very special episode of Burke Makes Stuff, I'm gonna be showing you step-by-step -step how to break down a piano. Let's get right into it. So I can already hear through the internet that so many of you are going, Burke, why aren't you giving this away to a family that can use it? or to a charity that can sell it. And I am here to tell you that neither of those, unfortunately, are viable options. Lots of people are online trying to get rid of their pianos for free right now, and no one is taking them. If you get a piano, they're so heavy you have to get them professionally moved, and that's expensive. If you're gonna have a piano in your house and you need to keep it tuned, that's relatively expensive, and they take up so much space in a home that people really aren't getting them anymore, unless you have a lot of room. So I did look into all of that before or any of this and it just can't be done. But I am happy to say that I'm going to be saving as much of this piano as I possibly can to use for future projects, to use for some sculptural things, to do some woodworking with. So it's not just going to waste, it's going to be put back into circulation in my own way. You'll see, you'll like it, trust me. Let's get into this. First thing we gotta do is make some room. Now the piano lives in my living room and dining room and as you can see the lighting is absolutely horrible. Every time the sun goes behind a cloud, it changes everything, so we'll have to figure that out. But first thing we need to do is get everything off this piano. This is the piano that I learned how to play on as a kid. Both my sisters learned how to play on this. My dad played on it for years. He was a music teacher for the start of his teaching career. And we were kind of raised really musically, which was weird to me because when we all moved out and got our own places, nobody wanted the piano. So it came to my house, and I knew I wanted it for a long time, and now I know I don't want it anymore. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna salvage as much of the wood as I possibly can for projects, for the family, sentimentally. I'm also gonna be salvaging some of the innards for sculptural purposes, because the inside of a piano is a gorgeous, gorgeous thing. But the reason that I haven't done it, although I've known for over a year that I wanna do it, is really weird, and that is that the one thing that has haunted me about this is the concept that I would know the last song that was played on it. I know it's weird, it is, um, but I'm gonna go along with the concept that you, maybe some of your musicians, that, that you get it, that an instrument is more than just the sum of its parts. It's weird, I know, but I'm trying to figure out how weird, so do me a favor. If you understand what I'm talking about, go to the comments and type, I get it. And if you have no idea and you think I'm completely off my rocker, go down to the comments and type, I don't know what you're talking about. That would help, I think. So, without further ado, um, like the only song I really remember how to play, if we're being honest. Here we go. Okay, enough sentimentality. Let's take this thing apart. Now step one is just to lift the top and remove that entire face plate. It comes right out, it's built to do so. Remember, these have to be repaired fairly regularly or at least tuned fairly regularly. So getting in at the innards is actually very simple. It's been designed to be exactly that easy. What I'm doing now is loosening the pins that hold all of the hammer sets in place for the piano. I'm not gonna remove that yet because I realized halfway through that I'm gonna need a little bit of more accessibility so I'm gonna go and take the face plate that covers the keys off first. And that's done really easily just by removing a couple of screws with your screwdriver or your drill. And as you can see, it's now much, much easier to get at all the innards of the piano, all the hammers and actions and all. Now I'll be saving this entire piece for another video. I'm gonna be making a sculpture out of this. According to the 1982 Maker's Mark I found inside, this piano is about 37 years old. And I guarantee you that in those 37 years, no one has taken this piano completely apart to dust the inside, just as I'm sure they haven't with yours. So my advice is simple. As you take each layer of the piano out, clean what's below it. Uh, and as long as you do that, you should be fine with dust containment and all that. The next thing to remove is called the key stop rail, and it's literally the piece of wood that holds the keys down and keeps them in place. So as soon as you get that out, you have access to all the keys beneath. 
My wife already asked me to save the keys and make something awesome for our wall, which we'll do in another video, but I'm gonna make sure to remove them very carefully so there's no issues. Now when I go to put them all back together or use them in some way, one of the awesome things that's built in is at the top, just underneath the brass knobs, every one of the keys is numbered so that you can put them back in the right order easily. Since we've removed another layer, of course we need to clean this whole thing up of dust. And what you're looking at right here is actually the pins that go through the keys to hold them in their exact positions. We're actually gonna save this piece too for that sculpture I talked about before. And this piece gets removed just like so many of the others with just a handful of screws. Now one thing I do wanna show you, you see these pieces of what look like garbage right now? They're actually not. They're tiny paper thin slices of wood that were used to level the keys exactly. A piano is such an intricate instrument that everything has to be exactly level with each other inside for it to work properly. Next we're gonna get on the floor and remove all the screws from the board that's basically underneath where the keys were. And that's going to let us take off the key slip and the lower front board, which will get us access to all the strings and pedals underneath. Now, of course, since we've opened a new layer, there's another 37 years of dust just sitting waiting for us. And while we're down here, we're gonna also remove all the pedal mechanisms, which are actually really easy, just wing nuts and screws. And then after we get that done, we'll go and clean the pedals and take them out as well. Really, really simple. So now we have to deal with the dangerous part. <laughs> Do you hear that? Ha! Huh. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, the strings are all out right in front of me, so they're reverberating off of the sound that my voice is making. Um, so I hope that doesn't add too much weirdness into the video audio. Um, so, um, we need to deal with these, and they actually are severely dangerous. These are the strings that are actually hit to make any of the notes from the piano but they are kept under tension in order to have them tuned properly. That is where the danger comes in. Because these are under tension, if you snip one or snap one, they will shoot out at you like a whip and can do some severe damage, especially the bigger ones, the thicker ones. They're made out of harmonic steel wrapped in copper wire. These things are heavy and thick gauged and really able to do some damage, so be careful as you go through. Easiest way I find to do it is, especially for the bigger ones, just take the tension off of the top um, key and that is to turn it counterclockwise so that you lose the tension. On the top side is a little more labor intensive because of all of these little pins. Each actual note has three strings that are hit to make it and because of that you have to do three times the work. Now this is where things got really obnoxious. Now I'm not going to show you every one of these that I tried because it would be a huge waste of your time but I will tell you that none of the following work to move these. Pipe wrenches, adjustable wrenches, slip joint pliers, tongue and groove pliers, bent nose pliers, needle nose pliers, flat nose pliers, or locking pliers. And this is where I started losing my mind, until I remembered that somewhere in one of my ratchet sets, I saw something square shaped like this. So I went hunting. Now, I wish I could just tell you what this is exactly, but I'm not exactly sure when it comes to ratchet sets, so here's the best I can explain it. It's two pieces, and the first is a 7 seconds hex bit that is put into the 7 second ratchet bit that I think has a quarter inch adapter. Now, you put the hex bit side into your drill or impact driver and use the square opening on the piano tuning pegs. That's how I made this work. I just beasted it together. Now that I had this little combination put together, it worked really, really well on taking these strings off. But what the big problem was, was that the amount of force I had to put through the drill, it ate the batteries like they were going out of style. I recharged my batteries, I don't even know how many times during this process. And on top of that, even with the ear protection, the noise it was making was driving me crazy. Take a listen to this. And that was just from one string. There were 220 strings that had to be undone. Oh my God. Now that all the strings are detensioned and detached from the top end, you go down to the bottom end with a pair of pliers, and this is super simple. You just pull them off of the pegs that they're attached to down there, and they come right off. I then cleared off, unscrewed, and removed the entire top piece. That is definitely a piece of wood I'm going to be saving for further projects. 
And then I got into dealing with the body itself, which was amazingly heavy. Because the piano is so heavy, I knew that if I laid it down, there was no way I was gonna be getting it up by myself. So I took a little time to make sure all of the screws that I could remove from the back end were removed before I laid it down. Very, very, very carefully. Once you have the piano safely down, screwing off the legs is really, really simple. And then there's a handful of screws that hold what's called the key bed, which is this large piece here, to the key blocks and the side arms. Now you can take all those off, but I'm definitely going to save the key bed because it's a big, fat, thick piece of wood that cries out to be used elsewhere. At this point, I was really excited. Everything seemed to be going really smoothly. It was just a couple of screws away, or so it seemed, from this entire project being done. I was taking the last of the bottom pieces off, and then I was just going to remove the cast iron center when I found something out. While starting to remove the cast iron center, it seemed as though it was only held in place by about 20 or so huge screws. So I removed them all, and nothing moved. It turned out that all of these tuning pins, all 220 of them, ran directly through the cast iron center and into the wood of the piano itself, and would have to each be individually removed in order to get that cast iron piece out. It literally took hours, but when I was done, I was left with about 350 pounds of cast iron that our local scrap guy gladly took. I ended up being able to salvage hinges, brass pedals, hardware, the copper from the strings, the hammer and key action, the keys themselves, lots of various wooden components, but there was still some wood left over that I didn't know exactly what to do with. But then, I got an idea. I've always loved music by the fireside. I hope you enjoyed this super special episode of Burke Make Stuff slash Burke Break Stuff. I kept about 50% of the piano that's going to be recycled and upcycled into future projects right here on Burke Make Stuff. So if you liked it, make sure to subscribe. The subscribe button is I don't know where, depending on what device you're on. And right next to that subscribe button, there's a little bell icon. And if you hit it, it connects me to you. And anytime I upload something new to the internet, it will make you aware immediately. Beyond that, if you really did like this, go find the little button that looks like this. It's a like button. And if you click it, it says that you liked it. So you liked it and you liked it. Awesome. Guys, I'll see you guys next time. Uh, thanks for being here with me again. It's always awesome. And if you like this very special episode of Burke Break Stuff, let me know in the comments.